All right. Hey, everybody. This is Adam and Jess. Hello. Uh, thanks for joining us today. We're just going to hang out a minute and make sure that everyone that wants to join can get in. So give us, I don't know, like two, three minutes. Uh, hang out, get some coffee if it's early enough or even if it's late enough. You never know. Coffee's good for all day. Uh, and we will go ahead and get started here in just a moment. Really hoping, really hoping that we can continue our streak of our number one fan showing up. Um, <laughs> I, 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 feel, I feel like it may not happen today, you know, spring break and everything will be spring break going on in some places. Uh, but, you know, if, she, if Amy joins, that'd be fantastic. I have yeah. a feeling I'm going to put my money on not joining. It's like I will take that bet. bet. You'll take that bet. I'll All take right. that bet. <laughs> uh, I see who we got. Oh, we got Jane. Jane is. Jane's right up there. Yeah, Jane's right up there. She she comes every time. Thanks, Jane. Thanks for thanks for showing up. Really appreciate you, Julie. Uh, also, really appreciate you, uh, Heather. Thanks for joining. Uh, oh, Julie, do you, I see you raised your hand? Any questions? Feel free to ask a question now if you'd like. We're just hanging out, waiting for everyone else to join that wants to join. Uh, and uh, my apologies if I say this wrong. Uh, Yajeri, yeah, yeah, Yajeria, uh, thanks for joining as well. Um, I'm deeply sorry if I uh, messed up your name. <laughs> Hopefully I said that right. Uh, Pooja, thanks for joining. Uh, glad that I'm seeing some new names. That means you guys are excited to see some new stuff about Short Stack. Hopefully you'll walk away with uh, some great information that will help you guys out in tracking the performance of the campaigns you run with Shortstack. Um, for those of you that just joined, we're just gonna hang out about like one more minute because uh, we still have people coming in. So we just wanna give everyone a chance to get in so they can see the beginning of this right when we start. All right. Adam, did you do anything for St. Patty's Day? Uh, we made a little leprechaun trap for the girls. I've, I have two, two children. Um, but what really was is they freaked out thinking that the leprechauns were going to steal all of our shiny stuff. <laughs> like they were literally like, can we, should we hide the silverware? Should like, do we need to put something over the coin jar so they don't steal our coins? Where'd they They're, get that from? Did you tell them that leprechauns steal shiny things? Well, we said that, that leprechauns like shiny things and <laughs> that it just went down a rabbit hole. They were scared to death that the little green monsters were going to steal all of our shiny stuff. That's fantastic. And, and then they asked me if they were Santa's pet. Oh, that that kind of makes sense to me. <laughs> Maybe. They're, they're, they're Santa's little spies. They, they, they come around to check, make sure you're still good even after Christmas. They're like the spring version <laughs> of elves. <laughs> the spring version of elves they leave money <laughs> or in our case uh chocolate coins <laughs> They're like wow they left us they left us chocolate coins where do you think they got these nah, i don't know, I don't know. How funny. What, I, what i have learned though is be as descriptive and as informative as possible because if you're not they just have questions upon questions you got to <laughs> give them like a definitive answer so it just this stops right there can't go any further <laughs> well, just send them to google that from now on <laughs> go google it kaylee go go google that mm -hmm. uh all right wow we got some other new people uh and you know honestly i'm seeing all new names that's fantastic I i'm excited that, that we got some new people in um i think we'll go ahead and get started so uh with that i am adam himmler the sales vice president for short stack and i am joined by my good friend and colleague uh jessica Hello, I'm Jessica Miller. I've been with Shortstack for a few years now, eight years, I think. Um, I'm My title is uh, a customer success strategist, which I just do my best to help our new users learn the ropes using Shortstack so they're successful with the software. And before we get started with the actual content of this training, I just wanted to go um, over a couple housekeeping items. If you've done these trainings before, you'll know that a portion of the training is actually pre-recorded. And we do that for a number of reasons. We do that just to make a very clean presentation. And then also it makes it really easy for us to just wrap it all up in a package and email it out to you right after the training's over so that you'll always have that information. But of course, since we're doing a live training, we wanna show you the information and then we're gonna answer your questions live at the end. So 
Uh, once the video is over, stick around and um, Adam's gonna be going through all your questions. He's really good at answering them and then uh, we'll go from there. All right, so I think unless you have anything else, Adam, we'll kick off the video. Sounds good to me. Most business owners and marketers do some form of tracking, even if it's as rudimentary as running an ad and watching their sales increase or stay the same. But in this age of digital media, there are so many more opportunities to dive deeper and really get to the bottom of what's working to drive sales. When we learn these valuable tidbits, it can go a long way in helping us to drive even more sales. To put it plainly, if you're not tracking your marketing data, you could be losing out on a whole lot of revenue potential. Shortstack has recently implemented some new tracking tools that we're really excited to share because they'll not only help you maximize your campaign's ROI, they'll help paint a clearer picture of your audience and how that audience prefers to interact with your brand. With that in mind, let's look at a giveaway we ran last year to show you the types of data you can track. First and foremost, it's important to see what kind of action your landing page, ad, online store, etc. is getting. In this giveaway, you can see the views, unique views, entries, and even the number of emails that were opened. When comparing this to other giveaways we've ran, and knowing our benchmark engagement rates, we can get an understanding of how successful this giveaway was. If we saw more engagement with this giveaway, we can then draw conclusions as to why and use that data when building our next giveaway. Next, let's look at where traffic for this giveaway actually came from. As you can see, the majority of our traffic came directly from where we marketed this giveaway and linked it to our landing page. In other words, from an email, our homepage, login screen, and even from our email signature. You can also get a glimpse of the geographic representation of your traffic. We can see that the majority of our giveaways traffic came from the US. However, pretend that these numbers from Germany and France were much larger. It might be in our best interest to offer our next giveaway in more than one language, which you can actually easily set up in Shortstack. Under entries, an important piece of information to know is what type of device your audience is using to interact with your campaign. If you see that your entries are happening largely on mobile devices, it'll be imperative to make sure that the mobile experience is sufficiently optimized. Sharing gives you a glimpse of the number of times your campaign was shared, as well as the platforms it was shared to. For this giveaway, we didn't encourage sharing, so there isn't any data here. However, if you were encouraging shares, it could lend you valuable insight. For example, maybe you had been putting all of your ad dollars into Facebook, but notice through this share data that your audience is really active on Twitter. You may be inspired to reallocate some of your ad dollars to Twitter or even to try running a retweet contest. If you're sending an autoresponder to form entrance, you can see what type of engagement that email is getting by viewing the open rates as well as clicks. Autoresponders tend to get far higher open rates compared to traditional email campaigns. The benchmark for an open rate across all industries is about 20%, whereas you can see here that this campaign's open rate was about 40%, so that's pretty good. And lastly, clicks lets you know how much or how little visitors are interacting with your page. If clicks are an important part of the user experience, you can see how well your click-through rate stands up to your unique views. In this case, we were mostly looking for form entries, so the clicks weren't too important, but they may be in another scenario. If you want to dive a bit deeper into the data your campaign is collecting, you can do so using our tracking widget connected to either a Facebook Pixel or Google Analytics. Google Analytics offers much of the same information you'll see in Shortstack's analytics, with some categories broken down further for an even deeper dive. I'm tracking a demo campaign here, so the numbers are pretty low, but you'll still see some activity represented. Take a look here under Acquisition. Google will not only show you the source of your traffic, but also the medium, which refers to how the traffic arrived at your site. So, for example, the source of your traffic might be Facebook, but the medium could be a post or an ad. The medium for these entries shows as referrals. You can see which regions your traffic came from broken down by country, just like in Shortstack's analytics, but then also by city, and then they even list the languages spoken. Now that we've looked at a few ways to interpret your campaign's analytics, I'm going to hand it over to Adam, who will show you a few more tracking tools as well as how to set them up in Shortstack. All right, thank you, Jess. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to talk about our tracking widget. So this is a, a pretty simple but very powerful widget that we introduced in 2020. Uh, currently, it works with uh, two different platforms, uh, Facebook and Google. Now, to add a tracking widget, you'll go into your campaign builder 
And then up in the Add Widgets panel, it is the third teal colored icon, a widget icon. Looks like a little uh, line graph. Click on it. And right away, we'll show you the please select your tracking platform option. Now you might be saying, well, what if I wanna do both Google Analytics and Facebook Pixel? That's fine. Just add a tracking widget, set up whichever one you wanna do first. And then once it's set up, add another tracking widget and set up the one that you haven't set up. So for instance, do Google Analytics first and then add another one to do Facebook Pixel. Now you will see here that we have two Google Analytics options. There's just Google Analytics. This is the more common option that is used currently. And then there's the new Google Analytics 4. So this is a new version of Google Analytics that was released in October of 2020. Um, if you need a quick um, um, idea of you know which one you're using internally for either your own business or the business you work for. If your tracking ID starts with G dash, then you're using Google Analytics 4. If your tracking ID starts with UA dash, then you're using the regular Google Analytics. Now I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail of what the difference is between the two because we're talking Google Analytics here. There's, there's gonna be quite a bit of difference. It's an overhaul of, of their previous version. But the important part here for this call is we support both options. Now, if you select, let's say Google Analytics first and then go to set up on the left-hand side, you'll see that we ask you for your UA code. So all you have to do is just grab that UA code that starts with UA dash, grab the entire uh, snippet of code um, and then place it into that field. Now, if I go back to platform and select Google Analytics 4 and then go to setup, you'll see that we're asking you for your um, uh, measurement ID. So that's gonna start with a G dash. We will provide a little snippet of information here of finding your measurement ID. Um, so hopefully this will help you quickly find it as it very well could be buried. And then if I go back to platform and select Facebook Pixel and go to setup, you'll now see that it says Facebook Pixel ID. Place it in there. And then, um, still on Facebook Pixel ID, if I go to events, you'll see that we have two events here that we track. We have page view and form submit. Form submit would be someone entering the form that you have on your campaign. Now, you don't have to track both if you don't want to. Just uncheck what you don't want to track on the left-hand side. And then you'll see under label for lead, which is connected to form submit, I can select lead and I can change that to complete registration. You might ask, well, why would I want to change that? That's dependent on how you have your Facebook Pixel ID set up on your end. So whichever event that you're looking for, either complete registration or lead, you wanna make sure that it matches here on the Pixel as well. Excuse me, in the tracking widget. If I go back up to platform and go to Google Analytics, go down to events, you'll see that we have the configure the events to track. Uh, like before, we have uh, the track check boxes on the left-hand side, so uncheck the ones you don't want us to track. And then we have page view, form submit, click, which click tracks clicks from the nav bar, buttons, images, so hot spots on your image, and uh, rich text widgets. Um, but you want to keep in mind that clicks on links, which open in the same window, may not get tracked before the new page loads. Uh, and then we have sharing video start and video end. Um, now, because Google Analytics is so in depth, there's some additional options here such as category, which we have them automatically labeled as widgets, um, but this corresponds to the category field in the Google Analytics event tracking. So again, it's kind of a mirrored approach. Look how you have the categories on your Google Analytics and see how the categories here. Um, and if you want to change that, obviously you have the opportunity to do that because we give you the option to change each of them. And then the action, um, the action is going to correspond to the action field in your Google Analytics event tracking. Uh, this is typically used to describe the type of action being performed. And then the label. So this corresponds to the label field in your Google Analytics event tracking. Uh, this is typically used to provide more detail to help differentiate similar events. For example, the default setting will include the URL that was clicked for a click event. And again, you can change those as well. You might change it and say, oh, you know, I want to restore it back to the default settings. We provide that option in the bottom right corner to make that easy for you. 
Now, if you've made the switch to Google Analytics 4, if you go to events, you'll see that there's nothing there. That's because Google Analytics 4 will automatically track additional events and automatically attracts, uh, uh, automatically tracks the events of page view, generate lead, click share, video start, and video complete. Um, so they're trying to streamline it a little bit more. It doesn't mean that Google Analytics 4 on the back end isn't uh, less complicated because again, we're talking Google. <laughs> All right, so that's the tracking widget. You can have as many in there as you need to. Um, send them up how you like and make sure you click save and exit. For those of you that aren't gonna use Google Analytics or Facebook tracking pixel, we do provide our code widget, which is right next to the tracking widget. Um, and this code widget allows you to put in HTML, JavaScript, or really just about anything that you want. Um, and what you could do is you know, let's say you're using a, a Twitter tracking pixel. Um, most likely it'll work if you copy the entire pixel and then place that right into the code widget in its entirety. Now on the left hand side, you'll see a placement option. So if in the Twitter pixel instructions or wh whatever you're using, if it states that it has to be in a very specific place, this is where you have to do it. So whether it's in the after the head, before the head, after body, before body, or just in line, make the selection here. By default, it will be the inline placement. Um, now, if you find yourself using the specific tracking pixel or something else quite a bit in the code widget, you'll see right down below the blank space in the setup, uh, it'll say, give it a name. So you could type in a name, so I could put in you know, Twitter tracking pixel, and then I can hit save to library. This will save it in my short stack account and it'll be accessible in the library on the left hand side right below setup um, for any campaign that I might be building. And you'll see that there's a public and then there's a private. Uh, the private uh, is where your saved code snippets will live. Uh, public is code snippets that we provide ourselves. Now, if you are going to use a code widget, be warned that because you're using something that we haven't built in ourselves, uh, that being you know these, this code that you're adding in, um, most likely we won't be able to provide detailed support like we typically can um, since it isn't our code. Um, it requires quite a bit of, of um, configuring and, 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 and breaking down what's happening or why it's not working the way it should be. And because it's not ours, it's not as easy for us to figure that out right away. So uh, we typically cannot provide support for any code widget use. Um, however, if you have access to an account manager, um, it's possible that they might be able to provide a, a little bit more assistance. Uh, but either way, just know that going into using the code widget, chances are that you're going to be on your own. Um, so um, I make... I would just say make sure you know what you're doing and read all the documentation that the service that you're getting the pixel from or the analytics from, uh, read all the documentation that they provide. All right, so our analytics, which you have access to if you're on the agency plan, can be accessed in a few different ways. Um, one of the easiest ways to do that uh, for a particular campaign is if you're in the campaign builder, you'll go up in the top left corner where it says campaign menu. Uh, this is right next to the gear icon. So in fact, it'll say the name of your campaign, but when you hover over it, the little bubble that appears says campaign menu, click on it and then go down to view analytics. So this will open up the analytics that we provide. It'll be in a, in a pop-up. And uh, Jessica went in uh, some uh, detail over this, but just to kind of reiterate, uh, we have traffic, which is gonna show you the total number of views um, and unique views, views by device type, so desktop, mobile, tablet, uh, traffic source, so the referring domain, the domain that they were on prior to coming to the campaign, and then views by environment, web, Facebook, and embedded. Web would be landing page, so if you chose to install your campaign as a landing page, that's what that's going to be. Um, views by country, so that is going to be, you know, Pretty obvious uh, how many views in, in each country um, that you received on your campaign. And then if I go back up, you can go to entries. Um, so the total number of entries, entries by device type, um, and then sharing. 
autoresponder. So if you have an autoresponder link synced up to your campaign, then this will show how many were sent, how many were opened, and then uh, what people were clicking on within the email itself. And then if I go to clicks, this will show me how many clicks on the campaign and what links they were clicking on. Uh, in the top right corner, uh, this will say all current and past URL. So if you publish your campaign multiple times or on multiple URLs, uh, you'll be able to break down the analytics based on each separate URL in that top right corner. And then you can go export as a PDF and then we'll provide you a screenshot of what you are seeing at the moment that you selected export as PDF. Uh, the other way that you can access your campaign analytics is to go to campaigns first. This is where you see all the campaigns that you've created. And then on each uh, tile, campaign tile, on the right hand side, you'll see a little pie graph icon. Click on it and then that'll open up the analytics as well. Now, speaking of analytics, we also provide email analytics. So if you are sending autoresponders, scheduled emails, um, follow up emails, then you, we have analytics for you as well for that. So if you click emails at the top, you'll see all the emails that you've created. You'll see lifetime email sent, open rate, and lifetime email clicks. Uh, if you want to look at the analytics for a particular email, much like the campaigns area, you'll just look for the cam, uh, excuse me, the email that you want to find the information on, and then click the drop down icon on the right hand side, and then at the top of that drop down, you'll see analytics. Select it, and then you will see all the analytics that we provide um, there, which will go into opens. Um, and, and clicks, much like the analytics that we provide for autoresponders when talking about um, our campaign analytics. So there you have it. A uh, lot of different ways to track analytics, whether it's emails or your campaign, Facebook, Google, something custom. We try to provide all the resources that we can so that whatever you might be using, you'll be able to incorporate into your campaign. Awesome, thank you, Adam. Let's talk about some tracking option details. The good news is that there are tracking options available on all of our plans. Whether you're using a tracking widget or code in a code widget to track data, both of these options are available on all plan levels. If you prefer the convenience of our built-in analytics, that option is available on our agency plan and higher. Now, take a look at the links on your screen. This is where you can get in touch with us while setting up these features on your own and have questions. All right. Thank you, Jessica, as always, for that great video. Sure. All right. Uh, let's do that. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is just kind of a recap of some of what the items we went over in the video um, for those of you that are on the call. So I'm sharing my screen. Um, you should see my short stack account. And while I'm doing this, if you have questions, please put them in the Q&A area. That would be fantastic. Uh, I do see some chat, however, so I'm gonna go in there and just see what's going on. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. All right. Uh, okay, so from Heather, you're saying that uh, you had some things going on while we're doing the video. What we're doing is um, we're, we're gonna have recorded this, which Jess has said right there. So we're all set. Jess took care of you, Heather. So there we go. Thank you, Jess. Um, perfect. So yeah, if you have questions while I'm going over, uh, different items, put those in the Q and a area and it doesn't necessarily have to be questions about what we talked about. Um, if you just have a general question about short stack, I'm more than happy to answer those questions for you. So with that, um, where I am right now is my dashboard, which, um, is another great place to see some analytics. Now, these three items you see here, campaign views, entries, and email opens. This is an accumulative um, uh, numbers for all my campaigns and emails that I've sent in the last seven days. So as you can see, I've had 699 campaign views, I've collected 229 entries, and I've had three email opens. Uh, I'm not super active in actually running campaigns that people interact with. Uh, those of you that do run campaigns all the time, these numbers should be much higher than mine. Um, now, what you can do is you can um, come up to campaigns at the top. And if you wanna look at the individual analytics for any one campaign that you have running, you'll come right over here and click on view analytics. Now I'm gonna be showing analytics for a campaign that's never run. So I won't have any 
excuse me, I won't have any numbers here to display, but you'll still get a good idea of what you're gonna see. So we have campaign views, unique views, entries, and email opens. And then down below, we break this down by traffic. So that'll show you the total number of views over unique views, views by device type, so desktop, mobile, tablet, um, views by environment. Now, for those of you that are brand new to ShortStack, um, I realize that there might be some confusion here when you look at the analytics, you might see, well, Facebook, you know, why is Facebook there? So we used to support the ability to publish to Facebook. Um, any new users that sign up for ShortStack, that's not a feature that we have any, any longer, um, just because of all the changes that Facebook is, is making. And um, they're really de-emphasizing tabs on Facebook, making it really hard to find, unless of course you're putting a lot of ad money behind it, which in our viewpoint, if you're putting ad money behind posts, what better place than to direct them to your website where you can embed your campaign. Um, so that's where our mentality is. So for the time being, you're, you'll still see Facebook here at 0%, but generally your um, views by environment is gonna be web, which is the landing page option or embedded is when you embed it to your website. Uh, now, if I come back up here and I go to entries, one item to that I like to really point out is you'll see that under traffic, we have views by device type. So let's say my mobile view here is, you know, 70%. So most of the people viewing my campaign, they're on mobile. If I were to go to entries, and let's say I saw that my mobile entries was like 20%, that tells me that the mobile experience in entering is a bit difficult for people. And that you need to take a look at that. Because if most of your views are on mobile, but most of your entries are on desktop, there's some kind of disconnect there. Um, which luckily with our platform, you can create mobile specific experiences and desktop, ex uh, desktop specific experiences under the same URL. Meaning you can turn your mobile view into a very um, slim down version where it's you know very easy to get right to the form, fill out, see what the content is going on. Versus desktop, you can have it be more uh, in depth, you know, more content, more details, more information, because you have them for longer when they're on their desktop computer. Um, apologies, my my dog is downstairs. He's excited about something outside. Um, so then we have sharing. Um, so we make it easy to share to Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, LinkedIn. Um, so we'll show the percentages for that. And then if autoresponder, if you are going to send one out, then you'll be able to send that. Um, through our platform and we'll show the information here. And then clicks, uh, we'll show you how many clicks have occurred and what people are clicking on. So those are our analytics. And typically when you combine ours with you know, Google Analytics, you're basically covering everything that you would ever wanna know. Um, now let's jump into a giveaway and we will talk about the tracking widget. Let's make sure I'm not missing any questions. All right, so far so good. Again, if you have questions, even if it's about something else uh, related to ShortStack, feel free to post that in the Q&A and I will be happy to answer it. All right, so I'm in the campaign builder. This was a giveaway that I was working on the other day. And what I'll do is I'll go into the add widgets panel and I can grab the tracking widget. Now, you don't necessarily have to place this in any specific spot. In, in your campaign, if you will. So I don't typically drag it anywhere. I'll just click on it. We'll automatically add it to the very bottom of your campaign. And then we'll have the three options here, Google Analytics, Google Analytics 4, and Facebook Pixel. Now you might say, well, I wanna do Facebook Pixel and I wanna do Google Analytics. Well, you'll just set one up first. And I would recommend anytime you have multiple of the same widget that you name it so then you know that this one is your google analytics widget and then the next one will be your facebook pixel the tracking widget so i'll select google analytics um, if i had a uh, easily accessible ua code i would place it right there and then i go to events and then i would decide the uh, events that i want to track and now i want to categorize it and what the action is and the labels that will be applied on my google analytics account um, now, if I go back up, go to platform, select Facebook pixel, then you'll put in the pixel ID and then you go to events and then you'll tell us, do you want us to track page view and form submit? Now under form submit, you can change the label to be either lead or complete registration. 
This is dependent on how you have your pixels set up. If the action or event that you're looking for is supposed to trigger a complete registration, then you want that label to reflect that here as well. Looks like I have a question from Julie. Can you illustrate the difference between, between mobile version and desktop version of a campaign? I was not aware there were options because the entry page is responsive anyways. So can we opt to include more info on desktop version of a single campaign? You absolutely can. So um, I've basically gone over what I want on the tracking widget. So this is a good segue to cover your question. So uh, typically, and, and there's no right or wrong answer, but typically the way I like to set up my campaigns when I have a very specific mobile version versus desktop is first I like to utilize the containers. A container is an easy way to group a bunch of widgets together so you can more easily manipulate them in one move or in one you know, change. So you'll see here that I already have a container and what I'll do here is I'll say, okay, this will be my desktop. And to see, to make sure that, you know, you are configuring everything that you want in, in one container, you can open and close the container and you'll see that I don't see anything beneath it. So that tells me that I'm, I'm containing everything that I need to. Now I've selected my container here, it is blue. Over here on the style panel, when you select a widget like I have, we will show that particular widget in the style panel so you can make changes to it. Right here, we have widget visibility. We have hide widget at this width or less, and we have hide widget at this width or greater. So because I want to make sure that this content that I have set up already will show up only on desktop, I will utilize the hide widget at this width or less. So what I'll do, it, well, actually, you know what? Let's, yeah. No, that's, that's, that's what we're going to want to do. Um, sometimes in my head, I get, I get, uh, I get the two kind of like uh, backwards. So um, what I'll do is I'll select, you know, tablet. And so what'll happen, and these are pre-configured options. So we have mobile, tablet, and desktop. If you're looking for a very specific width that you want to trigger it to not show up at, then you can just put that right here. That's not a problem at all. Um, so now what will happen is when we hit 768 pixels, this content won't show up anymore. Now you might say, well, okay, let's talk mobile. So easiest way to get your mobile version up and running is, at least in my situation, the way I like to handle it is I'll click on my desktop container and I'll make a copy of it and then I'll paste it in. And now I have a duplicate copy, but I'm going to change this to mobile. And then what I'll do is I'll just go through here and I'll remove the information that I don't need to have show up on mobile. And then I'll change, you know, maybe I have a, a, a more vertical based image versus horizontal for desktop. So I'll put that in and then I'll make some uh, additional edits and then I'll change the uh, visibility item here to say, okay, um, we're gonna hide this when it hits 1024 or maybe I wanna do, you know, 769. Um, so when the width of the campaign is at 769 or more, my mobile content won't show up. So that's at least in my preference, that's how I like to create a desktop and a mobile. Now you might say, well, I don't want to recreate or duplicate everything. And that's fine because every widget that we have, you'll be able to utilize um, that visibility setting. So if it's just one widget that you want to hide, if they're on mobile or on desktop, that's fine. You can absolutely do that. So test that out. And another great way to test that out without going live is using our width ruler um, in the preview mode. So you just go preview. I'll close all of my panels here. And then you can test out the width up here at the top. So just select a width that you want to test out, and then you'll see specific content show or hide. So I hope that answered your question. And of course, when you're configuring your campaign, whether it's for mobile or desktop or anything else, you, we have live chat down here in the bottom left corner, uh, typically Monday through Friday. And then we also have email support seven days a week. Um, so you can email us anytime or chat us up at any time in that live chat. 
uh, chat us up anytime Monday through Friday. Um, all right, so let's touch on the code widget. I'm, I'm not gonna go into a whole lot of detail only because like we mentioned in the video, using the code widget is kind of, you know, going outside of the level of support that we provide. Um, so, you know, it's there to allow you to use the knowledge that you have, whether it's custom HTML, JavaScript, CSS, or, you know, really whatever you want. We want to provide that kind of flexibility for you. Um, so you can add the code widget and this is the blank slate where you put in said code. You are able to create your own library of code. Uh, that's done by, you know, putting in once, once you're done putting in your code, you can come down here, uh, provide a name and then save the library. And then that library is accessible here. Now we have a public library. These are code snippets that we provide you with. And then your private library is here. Um, now I do have some Google analytics in here that I had before we had our tracking widget. Um, so I've added that into my setup area. And if I need to decide the specific placement, I can go here and you have the five different options. You can do inline, after head, before head, and after body, before body. And you might say, well, how do I know which one I need to use? This is typically gonna be stated within the instructions of the pixel that you're using or the snippet of analytics code that you wanna bring in. The instructions will typically tell you exactly where it needs to go. So it'll say places in the after the head. So you'll select after head and then you're all set. All right, let's see if we have any other questions. And we do, I think. Um, okay, no, there we go. I just didn't close it. All right, uh, let's check chat real quick. Make sure we're good there. Fantastic. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, when it comes to analytics, a few other items that I can touch on, and I realize we actually didn't touch on this in the video, um, which is my fault. I, I didn't realize that um, we actually had some analytics in the feeds area. It's not really, I wouldn't say deep analytics, it's just kind of a high level overview of how your feeds have performed. Now you might be asking like, what's a feed? With ShortStack, we have an integration with Twitter and Instagram. With Twitter, we can track retweets of whatever tweet you want. And we'll pull in all the usernames that have retweeted it. And then we can also pull in public tweets based on one or multiple hashtags. And then with Instagram, we can pull in public Instagram posts based on uh, a hashtag or based on an app mention, or you can require both an app mention and a hashtag. So it's basically us tracking entries on Twitter and Instagram. So the analytics that we provide here is pretty uh, simple in the sense that we're showing you how many entries we've collected. So this particular feed here, that's an Instagram one, I've collected three entries. Um, so that in itself is a bit of analytics. And then of course you can go to emails at the top and then we'll provide some analytics here as well. Uh, we have lifetime information up here at the top. Um, I have sent a lot of emails. I didn't realize I sent this many emails. So 125,000 emails. Uh, I have a 52% open rate and 30,000 email clicks. Um, that's a pretty good open rate when it comes to emails. Um, so this information is just very high level. But then if you want to break down any particular email that you might be running, click on this drop down icon and then go to analytics. Now, um, I don't have analytics for this because it's an autoresponder, but if it's a scheduled email or a follow up email, uh, then um, and if you actually sent it because I have not sent these, then the analytics will open up. All right. Um, unless there's any other questions, I, I think I'm all set on my end, Jess. Did you want to add anything? Yeah, I have one quick thing to add, and that's, of course, our next training. Don't miss it. We've been working on a lot of new templates, so we have um, we're, we have a lot of games, uh, game templates. So we have a brand new puzzle template that you may or may not have seen the email about. And then we also just released a, it's like a slot machine template. We call it Spin the Reels. Um, it's really cool. And plus we have a few other game type templates that we want to go over. So that's what we're going to be doing in our next training, which will be on April 15th. Perfect. And really excited about those. Um, th these are some really awesome templates that we've added. Uh, you don't have to wait until that uh, next webinar to actually check them out. Um, they are in our uh, uh, platform already. You can check them out on our website at shortstack.com slash templates. And then of course, within your account as well. Um, all right, so 
you know, thank you everyone for joining us. Really appreciate that you take some time out of your day to do that and to learn more about ShortStack. We hope this information is going to help you. And again, to reiterate, if you have questions, feel free to reach out to us. Um, Jess has posted the information in the chat area and it's also in the video and it'll be in the video that we create from this webinar. Um, I hope you all have a great rest of the day. Jessica, as always, thank you for joining me. Yep, it's, it's been fun. Awesome. All right, everybody, you guys have a great Thursday.